Actually, All right, let, let's talk about Deshaun Watson. That's where we have to start because yeah. for the eight-game sample size that we saw, it clearly wasn't good enough. This was the game, we talked about it on Friday, with the back end of their defense being as low-rated as they have been, this was the one that matched up for him breaking out. And that's exactly what he did. Guys, I know he missed on six passes, but honestly, four of those, by my memory, were throwaways. Mm -hmm. He was being rushed. One was a drop Mm -hmm. early on, on a third down play. We dropped the pass. Maybe a little too hard thrown, but it hit the man right. And I think... Only one was a true misfire. On the sideline, yep. And when you when you rack that up, I don't care how bad this Titans defense is. Those are the numbers we paid for. Right there. Now we gotta yep. get them for a lot. We need we need eight of those and one clunker mm-hmm. moving forward. Yeah, anybody could play that way once in a while. But he, that's gotta be the norm. And yes. if that is the norm a lot with of this defense yeah. and with this kicker. Don't win the division. They'll win the division. They will win the division if all of those things play out. Hundred um, percent. In terms of Watson, I mean, he was fantastic. Again, we talked about the one play where his brain dropped out of his head. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. They were very lucky not to turn it over there. But that was it. I mean, that's the o- literally the only play I can say anything negative. Was about he feeling himself? Day. You know how sometimes when a quarterback's just making everything work. Uh, that was kind of early. early. It was early before it he was, really played. But, but he was. I mean, he was on target. It felt like with every throw he made. He, he was on time. He was decisive in his decision-making. Uh, and guys got open. That helps, too, right? I mean, you know, that last touchdown on Amari Cooper, he gets wide open. And we know that, and we'll talk about it later. I don't want to get us bogged down, but that, that controversial call, which was a terrible call. Otherwise, he would have had more yardage, and Cooper would have had more yardage. He would have been too. over 300 if, yeah. that, if that was. Uh, but he had, I mean, the, the, what can you say? We For the first time for me, I know. Some others have lost, had lost some faith in him already. Last week was the first time I started losing the, my faith meter in, in Watson. It started to drop. And now, again, he's got to do it for more than one game. But my faith meter went right back up because I saw the guy that I saw in Houston. And we Bale saw it once. Now we got to see it for most of the games the rest of the that's year. That's right. Eight Especially, good ones, one clunker. That's yes. The, that's yeah, what yeah, everybody's got to have a bad game once in a while. Everybody's got to have a good game once in a while. The good quarterbacks have a majority of good games. That's what we got to see. And we got it. Through the roof yesterday with Watson, it was it was excellent. The advanced metrics, he was even better than you think. And I wrote about this after the game. There's all these new age stats, right? And some of them mean more than others, and some of them no one has any idea what they mean. CPOE is completion percentage over expected, and it's basically if this is the standard, this is what you're expected to do. How much better or worse are you? And it's hard to do it off one game. Like it's not. It's it's one of those stats that's better over a longer sample size. But Deshaun had the highest CPOE of the year yesterday at 19.2. So he's 19% higher than he should have been. And that's based on... Are you saying highest for him or the highest, highest for in any the league. quarterback? Highest any in the league. That's what we need yeah. to see. Tua, that puts him in an elite category. Tua yesterday, when they hung 70 on Denver, Tua was 16 and a half. So Deshaun was better than Tua. Wow. In terms of... And, and, and some of those throws, I mean, credit to his receivers too. He was throwing to dudes who weren't open and he was put in spots where only they can catch it. And they made the catch. DPJ and Amari come off the top mm. of my head. That DPJ back shoulder throw. Mm. First of all, let's Perfect. credit DPJ too. It mm. was first of all, you couldn't have walked it down there any better. Yeah. But receivers oftentimes will wait to reach for the ball until the very last second because they don't want the tell to the defensive back. If you go back and look at that catch, that's exactly what he did. He waited until the absolute last second for him to move his arms as to not key off key to the uh, corner that it was coming. It was that's textbook football, yeah. guys. The he, catch percentage on that play had to be pretty low. He had to make a perfect throw, and he had to make a perfect catch. But this is what happens. Happen. But but we've seen this. I mean, we saw this with Baker, where he gets into a rhythm and he makes great throws. He made Brashard Perryman look like an All Pro for a year. Like when yeah. you catch a rhythm, when you catch fire, your receivers will go make plays like that. When you put the ball in spots where only they can catch it, he was he was great. And again, I'll go back to that stat. I know a lot of people aren't familiar with it, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on it. And people who know it better than me say you get it's almost extra credit points for deep shots down the sidelines. And obviously he had a couple of those. But just the way that he commanded the offense, in terms of the the one play, we can get into that a little bit later. He lost his mind and panicked. That's all it was. I asked him about it after the game, and he was joking about it. But he just, he just we joke about it because it, it wasn't didn't a factor. Didn't matter. Yeah. Didn't like, he can't do that in a one score game. No, no. Particularly when the mantra coming into the football game was protect the football, yeah. and they had already turned the ball over once. Yeah. Like, you can't do that. You just cannot make that Doesn't mistake. Doesn't Elijah Moore already have two fumbles or three? 
He has at least two. two. I'll double check. I think he has two. Uh, we can't be having receivers dropping the ball, uh, fumbling the ball. Uh, like, this, this, while we're on the Elijah anyway, Moore, let's not waste sorry. a lot of time with him. But this performance to I me, I haven't seen it yet. This this, no. this performance for me is is is, is an, an '80s Transformers movie. Optimus Prime dies. He passes the the matrix of leadership to Rodimus Prime who was Hot Rod, and he turned him into a monster. They beat the Decepticons. Uh, eventually, Optimus Prime comes back, and he lives and in I don't know what the hell you're talking about but right now, bro. But for, <laughs> for all y'all in the chat, you know what I'm talking about. This right here is, is the matrix of leadership passing on from Nick Chubb to Deshaun Watson. I think Deshaun came into that building, and he understood the type of, uh, of leadership that Nick Chubb provided, and he understood it was the void. That made him step up. That made him step into the to the leader and perform on the field because there was no Nick Chubb to lean on. You have to now lead for the front. So when Deshaun, if you look at his whole career, he's always been a guy that steps up in adversity. You know, Clemson shouldn't be beat, beating Alabama back in the day, but Deshaun just refused to lose. Then you fast forward to this game, no Nick Chubb, and you could just see the confidence with every single throw, the confidence when he moving around, the vintage uh, Deshaun Watson shaking people off. The guys have him, he shakes them off somehow, looks over and finds somebody. Sideline passes, precision, everything, his demeanor. And, and here's how I knew they was ready to go. At the end of the game, when you see the chest bump between Deshaun Watson and Kevin Stefanski, You've never seen emotion like that in Kevin Stefanski since he's been here. He, he looked at him and said, this is the guy that's going to save my job. That's what that look is. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to save my job. You keep playing like this. Mm -hmm. And I was excited to see that, man. The, you know, that right there was like, yeah, that's the, that, that's the dude we've been looking at. That's the guy in the in meeting rooms that I'll be telling people. This is exactly why the Cleveland Browns could go very far. That picture right there. I, I think like it that. also tells the story some, you know, maybe, maybe you could misread into it, but it also tells the story that Deshaun Watson believes in Kevin Stefanski because he chose to celebrate his first great performance right. as a Browns quarterback with his head coach. Yeah. You know, he didn't go over it. Like, I'm sure he celebrated with everybody else, but like some guys are like, eh, my head coach sucks. I'm not, I'm not dapping him up in this spot. And he did. I think that, that has some well, I, I do too. Let's try to credit the performance, and that's always difficult because yeah. he could have turned a corner. He could have had a great week of practice. He could have finally put some of these mental ba pieces of baggage that he's carried with him behind him. What do we credit this to? Was Why so good after looking so mediocre for eight games? I think a lot of it is what you talked about. Tennessee's secondary is not very good. The weather was perfect, so all the conditions were there. And in terms of him, the one thing he said post-game yesterday – was I kept my emotions in check. And that's what he did not do in Pittsburgh Monday night. That's true. He got fined $35,000 for personal fouls and for celebrations and for everything else. His emotions were all over the place in that game. Sunday, he came back from the one panic play and he kept his emotions under control, played well, thrived in the system. Everyone who was screaming about the play calling before, I think you, they were way too hard oh, on the play miraculously call. play calling not a problem. Well, I can still, I, there were still <laughs> plays that I didn't love, I, but the play calling... Look, when they work, they're great. Yeah. Well, Period. they're all intended I mean, to work. They all are intended. The problem yeah. that I had was running the flea flicker, the double reverse flea flicker pass, and three plays later running another double. I joked reverse. with Zach Jackson. Boy, they're emptying the bag on one. <laughs> like, they're, no, they're, what was that? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I got no problem. But the tight end quarterback sneak, Jason. I've never. <laughs> and then late in the game, Watson actually did a quarterback sneak. But yeah. I, I told you guys in the chat, we, I know we talked about this last year. Zach Jackson told me, like, Deshaun is not a good sneaker. But he did it, finally. He, yeah, but yeah. that doesn't mean he's good at it. And he he struggled with it in Houston. It sounds silly to say, but that's why they had Brissett in I'm, there last year. He's never been very good at quarterback sneaks. And I'll give a little credit to Stefanski because I thought one of the most creative but under-talked about things about the game yesterday was this right here. He had the quarterback sneaks, and he put Harrison in. So on the second time, Harrison, guess what's coming? Well, when Harrison isn't under center in a situation where you would normally run a sneak... Now you've got the defense thinking it's not a sneak. Harrison's not taking the snap. It's brilliant, and it worked. It worked. And it now for the rest of the year, that's in teams' minds. What's going to happen if Harrison comes under center? And I bet there's a package where Harrison doesn't sneak it, 
Yeah. On a short third or short uh, third or fourth and short. I still don't think he's giving it to Harrison Bryant. I, I, I'm, but, I'm wondering, did, was he? Does he Bryant. have McNuggets? Did Harrison Bryant play uh, quarterback in high school at any uh, level? I will double check. Give me one second. Because I, I would be nervous as a coach about to uh, take right. a snap on the center. Yeah. 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 We got to have good hands. He's a pass catching tight end. He's yes. got good hands. Right. And I'm sure this is something that they. They have faith in him, or they wouldn't do. Be oh, doing. they love Harrison. I Bryant. wonder why Harrison. I don't know why. Why not? They they they, they spot shot who doesn't have good great hands. <laughs> Let's open up the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> game yeah. with with a nice little uh you know comeback route from Harrison. They spot I think they related. <laughs> Let me find out on Family Tree DNA Ancestry.com yeah. that him and Savasi is related. He loves Harrison Bryant. He loves him. And I think it's imperative for Deshaun Watson to follow this up with another good game next week. Because then you get to go oh. in the bye and you're feeling great. Yeah. You're feeling, he's feeling great now. Because we all know San Francisco's the best defense they're going to face all year the week after that. You want to be feeling great, him coming sure. off two games. We'll do more of that later in the week. But I, I, you want him to really be able to follow that up with another great performance. What, what was that, Mikey? So according to his NFL bio, it doesn't tell you. So I went back and looked at his college okay. bio. As a freshman in high school, he did play quarterback. Ah, freshman as a high freshman school? in high school. And then as a senior, you ready for these stats real quick? He moved to tight end. 39 catches, 608 yards, 10 touchdowns, 138 tackles, 11 sacks. Wow. <laughs> Here's a, who would have known he's a monster? Get after it. <laughs> and then he went to Florida Atlantic College. But, no, he played, according to his Florida Atlantic bio, okay. one year of quarterback in high school as on the freshman team. Uh, you, oh, okay. you mentioned his composure, and I think it's, it's, it's easy to have great composure when you're front running. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do love the fact that he turned it around. I think what we saw in the Pittsburgh game – was the frustration boiling up to the surface. He kept saying, I'm not concerned, I'm not concerned, but he played like, uh uh-oh. He played like he was panicking for his NFL life. The face mask penalties, come on. That's not who he is. That's Reek to me is a guy who was desperate to make something happen. What was, of everything that he did yesterday, all the components to his game, what was the most impressive part of what he did to you guys? Was it his accuracy? Was his decision making? What was it? I mean, I think it was all of it. It's hard to separate one from the other, but yes, the accuracy, if I had to pick, would stand out to me because he's been so not accurate. That's been the most troubling thing about him is his accuracy to me. I mean, he's thrown so many balls in these past weeks in the ground, eight yards out of bounds. Head. Yeah, it was terrible. And yesterday, there, I can't remember a single throw where I said, ah, oh, that's not a good throw. I mean, it may have been one or two, but I can't remember any. He was 82%-ish, I think, right? Second yeah, best of his was. career. Second best of his career. And again, if you go back to the number I gave you, the CPOE, he should have been around 63%, which isn't terrible, but it's certainly not elite, like 82%. And, yeah. and so that just – for, so for me to answer your question, it's, I think it's the accuracy. I, I think it was Stefanski uh, and the play call. Last week – Last week we had a ball. Well, I had a blog on the barbershop on UCSS. Y'all can check it out. Um, I, I said the key to unlocking uh, Deshaun Watson is the Baker Mayfield playbook. People lost it. They went crazy with his G Bush talking about he lost his mind. But when you got into the blog and what I was trying to explain was one of the reasons that Baker looked good in his best year was they pared it down for him, right? The only problem is Baker has limitations in certain areas where teams caught on to that, and it made it a little, a little more difficult to, to run the bootlegs and the stuff and play action. But Deshaun Watson has upgraded in accuracy, upgraded in arm strength, upgraded in mobility size. So the things that Baker Mayfield did in his playbook that were shortcomings, Deshaun Watson elevated those type things. So when you look at it, I, I felt like when you watch Deshaun Watson, why not give him some of the easier throws to start cooking? Give him some of the deep outs or comeback routes that Mari Cooper does well. Run the ball, multiple formations, and pare it down. So, so now you give your offensive line chance to actually run block, keep, mix it up up front, and not be sitting back there in five, seven-step drops. I think half his problem was when you get a $230 million quarterback, you naturally, in your mind, you want to see 230 million plays. Like, so you want to see deep outs, verticals, touchdowns, deep balls everywhere. But that's not necessarily what it's going to be best conducive for him to get it on the roll. You see when he gets in rhythm, you throw the ball deep, get hit guys under, underneath, and what happens is now that helps your receivers. 
That helps the offensive line and pass blocking. And now all of a sudden, Deshaun Watson has confidence moving yeah. forward. And you can always add stuff to the playbook. I is think it, they pared it down a little bit. Isn't it funny that he had by far his best game without Nick Chubb? Well, yeah. that's where I was going to go. And I kind of touched on this in the column I wrote last night. but And not to steal a topic Mikey might want to use later <laughs> in the week. But do I don't think we know what this offense really is going to look like in a post-Nick Chubb world. I, 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 I was yeah. asking guys on the offense yesterday, do you know what this looks like? And I got a lot of... I don't know. I guess we're going to find out because the running game wasn't great yesterday, which is fine. It didn't no, need it was, to be. It was actually bad. It was bad. Yeah. yeah. And so, but so they compensated for it, I think, a little bit with a little bit what G was saying. A lot of quick outs, a lot of quick hits, get guys in space. I, the, the Elijah Moore thing, they're cr- trying to crowbar him into this playmaker. Yeah, it's not working. I haven't seen it yet. Not yet. They're trying to line him up in the yeah. backfield. It's not there. They, the end arounds that they're running with Elijah Moore, I, just give it to Goodwin. Like, that was a Schwartz play last year. He can't catch it down the field, so just pitch it to him and give it to him in space. Sure. Do that with Marquise Goodwin. But they keep, they're trying this with Elijah Moore, and, and I'll give it a few more weeks. We'll see, but it's, it hasn't clicked yet. It's still early. But I just don't know because the greatness – I was talking to Zach about this yesterday. The greatness of Nick Chubb is – on first and 10, it's what should be a two-yard gain. He makes it a four-yard right. gain. Yep. If he's hit in the backfield, what should be a TFL, he gets three out of it. So Absolutely. it's not second and 12, it's second and, and nine. And he'll give you the occasional what could be a four-yard run to the house. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. reverses yes. field as now, well as any. Ford can give you that. He can. Yeah. Ford's going to hit home runs, but he's not the guy who's going to run between the tackles and give you tough yards that you didn't see coming. Yeah, I agree. That part's gone. So how do you adjust to that now? And how do you how does this offense compensate for it? I don't think we really know the answer to it yet. Yeah. But it's just something to keep an eye on. By committee. Yeah. Uh, Strong got some carries. Hunt got some carries. I think the, the, the ultimate answer to this question for me, anyhow, is like you. There were a lot of things. Um, the play calling absolutely was better geared towards Deshaun's strengths mm-hmm. and to what they had as their weakness. We don't have a running game. So we've got to do this. So I thought Stefanski on the fly uh, rolled – the absolute perfect game plan out for this game. But I'm not I'm not going to sell Deshaun Watson short. I don't care what the game plan was. It was his accuracy. Yeah. He was throwing the ball exactly where he wanted to throw it all day. Again, 27 of 33, go back and look at the tape. The misses were almost all throwaways mm-hmm. and he had the Pierce or the uh the Ford drop early in the game. Outside of that, Deshaun Watson put the football where he wanted it and where it needed to be on virtually every throw. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. If we continue to see that. Now, in some of those instances, there was plenty of space between the defensive backs of the Titans, which, by the way, were worse than I thought they were. I I had them lowly ranked coming in only because I hadn't seen them and I was going off where they ranked in the NFL. After watching them for four quarters yesterday, they're lost. They've got some problems. They're lost, and Vrabel knew it. Vrabel knew early on this is going to be a long day because his guys were in the wrong place. When they were in the right place, they weren't physically able to make the plays. There was a lot of space for Watson to throw. That said, there were eight or ten balls where he threw into tight coverage, and he threw it where only his guy could caught it, catch it, and they usually did. So, yeah. you know, Stefanski play calling, yes. Conditions were great, but... I give, I give the vast majority of this credit to Deshaun Watson's accuracy on the field yesterday. Mike, one last thing real quick. I wonder if they're on the Nick Chubb thing. I wonder if there is some, not obviously you're not happy that Nick Chubb's not there, but some sense of, of relief that he's like, I don't need to rely on the running game. I can't. Yeah. So there, there's maybe a freedom knowing they're going to throw the ball more. That he yeah. doesn't worry, have to worry about every pass because he knows he's going to get more opportunities Maybe. than in a game with Nick Chubb. You know, it kind of reminds me of, and, and we couldn't answer it, but it kind of reminds me of when Odell Beckham Jr. would go out for the Browns and Baker would look like a, an all It's the Ewing theory, the Bill Simmons Ewing theory. Yeah, the, I mean, the star takes up a lot of oxygen in the room. And, and, Bull, you might be right. Now, all that being said, yeah. there will be times this year. You'd still rather have oh, Nick Chubb than not this have him. Year, uh, yeah. Where they're going to look down the sidelines and they're going to fret not no having doubt. number 24. Yeah. No, I'm not saying point, they're better off yeah. without you know, him at all. You know, what is the NFL? Just, yeah. it's, a, it's a game of adjustments week to week. Yeah. 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 Now, 31 other teams will look at this tape and see what the Browns are doing without Chubb. Yeah. And at some point, this team is going to have to find a running game. And if he's not currently on this roster, we learned this. This defense is great enough. Where to your point last week, they, if the uh, if the I running back is currently said. in the room, yeah. they better go get him. I stand by what because I said this, last week. The iron's hot, yeah. and we've got a strike now. Yeah. 